At Virginia Studio, we teach old European decorative technique with modern medium. Hi, I'm Nicola Vigini. I was born in Rome, Italy, and I've been practicing decorative artists for over 20 years. Whether it be mural, grotesca, or trompe l'oeil, as a designer and teacher, I try and I combine all elements of decoration to create an overall unique effect. Remember, becoming an artist is not defined by talent, but rather a strong desire to improve combined with repetition. This is our Renaissance fresco panel. We're going to start from um, a flat, off-white latex base coat. And uh, the first things I'm going to do is to apply a mixture of glaze, sand, and latex paint again. This is to create a little tooth underneath our plaster. Here we are, now we'll let it dry. This is going to dry really fast, 15, 20 minutes, and then we'll be ready for the first layer of plaster. Now the first layer is dry, and we're ready to apply the first pass of plaster. This is a smooth, absorbent type of plaster. And again, I'm going to use a skip trowel application, but a very tight one, which means we're going to leave few holes between a full coat. This is applied on a thicker layer of the Venetian plaster. And first I cover a surface of a few square feet. And then I go back and I kind of refine the area and decide to close in some of the area that is still too open. Again, I carefully push the plaster around. I try to smooth it out without losing some of the open area. But I'm still applying more material until I cover roughly 80% of the surface. I try to eliminate heavy ridges or heavy travel mark, but if few marks remain, I usually send them off before I start to paint. It's a very easy type of plaster to sand. And I finish by cleaning my trowel and push the plaster around. And now I'm going to let it dry for at least two to three hour minimum before I can work on the next step.
We're ready now to transfer um, our stencil. Um, it's a three layer stencil, this is a number one. So we first position the stencil over the plaster. And then we always have to remember to take care of our registration marks. I use a piece of tape so I don't damage the plaster with my pencil. And we're ready to go. Um, the color that I'm using, it's white and burnt sienna. I'm using this color because it's a very soft, delicate effect to transfer the design first, since we're going to paint with multicolor at the end in top of this stencil. Always a very light application, dry brush technique. And we are now ready to remove the first stencil. We're now ready for the stencil number two. I'm going to find our registration marks. And here we're ready to remove our second stencil. Number three stencil. We are now done with the number three. Now I take some of the burnt sienna and add it to my mixture so I have a darker tone which will be able to stand out against the lighter background. very quickly and we are now done. We're now ready to start our hand painted part. Um, there's a few things you have to understand about the color system that we're going to use here. This is our Renaissance fresco uh, panel. So we're going to first start to use our four basic color based on traditional earth pigment, such as red oxide or green oxide or yellow ochre. Um, each one of those pigment will be mixed with white paint to give it a little more a pastel, a lighter and softer look. 
And then we're going to add this complementary to tone it down, to slightly gray it down. For example, our first color will be uh, green oxide. We're going to add white and then red oxide because red is complementary of green. So we'll tone the green down. As brush, I'm using my usual two round pointed brush and also I'm adding a long hair liner. I'm now changing brush, move to a slightly bigger brush from for the to paint the leaves. Very simple, quick stroke. Not to worrying about too many details. To gain some time, usually you want to do some of the same work on the opposite side using the same brush. And I'm kind of slightly <clears throat> dry brush on this area and kind of feathering the color a little bit to prepare for the transition to another color. Now we're ready uh, for our second color. This is red oxide, white, and a little touch of green oxide, the complementary color to tone it down. Now, one of the characteristics, very important in the Grotesca, is the transition on different elements from one color to another. It's not a naturalistic effect, it's more like a creative quality of the Grotesca. And we already started that earlier with our green and dry brush, preparing the blending with the next color. So we're going to do the same thing right now. Here again I apply my red color this time and then slightly dry brush into the green. Also, sometimes when I start to paint freehand over the stencil, I add detail, just like I add a little berry up here where they didn't exist. Now I'm adding some points to those leaves 
just to make the work a little more interesting and also to have variation every time I use the same stencil but I can add different detail to give it an original and done look. That's why the round brush is so important because I can move from a, a larger area, a larger load to this little delicate point. Now we are ready with our next color. It's a yellow. It's made out of um, raw sienna, yellow ochre. Of course, we always add white for our pastel effect. And then uh, a purple to tone it down slightly, made out of red oxide and ultramarine blue. I'm using a little bit of water to blend slightly the color. Again, slightly dry brush into the red. Those are the area where we can have a transition between the two colors. Our fourth color here is ultramarine blue white like usual and then um, an orange create with red oxide and yellow ochre um, as a complementary color to gray down the blue. We're now ready to add some of our shadow colors. This is a very important moment for this panel and for grotesque painting in general. Shadow, they need to preserve the original hue of the colors. We don't want to gray down the entire uh, panel by using a lot of black and raw amber. Actually, we can say that some of those colors are already the color of the shadow, and we're just going to put some accent, some darker accent. 
So we're going to start from the green, for example. And uh, what I did, I took ultramarine blue and yellow ochre, mix it together, and that's going to be our accent for the shadow. And we're going to put it only in some area. Now we're going to add some darker touch on the red. Again, I'm having on my palette some green that I mix with the red to tone it down even more. But also I have more of the pure red oxide to intensify some of the important spots. touch of the more intense color in the lower part will give us an effect of shadow but very colorful shadow. Okay now we have our um, yellow color and I'm mixing some ultramarine and some red to create a purple which is our complementary color for the shadow effect. In the larger area, I dry brush my color. Also, I'm using a cross-hatching effect to give a little bit of the illusion of the shadow. That's typical, also the tradition of fresco painting and grotesque. Okay, now we're going to start to work on our highlights uh, from the green again. On my palette, I have my original green and then we add, like always for foliage, white and yellow ochre to create our highlight color.
Now our, our um, highlight yellow color is the same yellow plus white. It's a very simple broad stroke over the this ornamental vase. Again, it's very important to understand that when it comes to highlight or shadow in the grotesque tradition, we don't have any blending. They're just very simple touch of color, relatively bright. Also because we're going to antique and distress this panel at the end. So otherwise, um, anything else will basically disappear after the process. So we want to be able to see at the end some of those uh, little strokes. That's why also I like to work out of the palette when it comes down to those details because I can increase the amount of white when I find small elements so at the end we'll be able to perceive those touches even through the antiquing process. Now I'm adding some accent of white into the highlight very delicately. And here we're done with the highlight of the yellow color. Now we're going to put a few touch of highlight in our blue color. Again, it's the blue color plus white. Now we're going to detail our face and we're going to start with a quick wash of burnt sienna. And I'm like to use a cheesecloth to um, light it up a little bit. And we're going to let it dry for a second. Now for the face, the next step, um, I'm mixing some red oxide, yellow ochre and white, and I will define all the important spots that highlight um, that give us the shape of the face. Usually again it's the front that we highlight, the cheeks, above the eyes, the nose. Above the mouth, always on one side, the chin. And I try to use a medium tone so we'll be able to come back with the darker one. And usually on the right side which is shadow, just the cheek catch the little highlight. Now I come back with the same color but more white on the same area, just doing really light patches. Just a little touch on the nose. Lightly on the lips, on the underneath part, and um, we're done with that. Um, I'm going to mix also a little dark color for the eyes. Again, I'm working with the same color, same flesh color, but I'm adding some raw umber this time to get my darker effect. 
and I'm painting the eyes basically. And you'll need the nose and a little line on the mouth. And we're done. And now uh, I'm ready for the final touch of highlight on the red color. I'm mixing like a kind of an orange color. I'm taking the red and I'm adding white, but also yellow ochre. It's very important on the red to give it that orange yellow um, tone to the highlight. And now staying on the pink side. We're now ready to um, take our panel. I have a 220 sandpaper in my hand and I'm going to sand the surface all over. And then when I'm done to do that, I'm coming back and detailing. Usually I take a new piece of sandpaper and then wearing off some specific area, targeting some area. And I put pressure with my finger so I can um, distress the image more. And now I'm ready for the next pass, which is a glaze. I here have my glaze with um, raw umber, raw sienna, and ultramarine blue. And then I'm using a steeple brush to get rid of all the brush mark. And now I'm going to wait 10-15 minutes according to the size of the surface and the temperature until the glaze um, becomes tacky and then I can wipe it out and leave some on the crevices. Now the glaze is ready. Um, I'm going to add a little bit of raw umber around some of the area where uh, there is a skip travel effect so I will retain more color and then Blend it again with a steeple brush. And 
and then um, using paper towel, cheesecloth, or some rag, um, I will start to wipe off the surface. Usually I keep twisting the paper towel, the cheesecloth, so I get more of a clean side, I can absorb more glaze. And then as it's still a little wet, I come back with my sandpaper once again. And you can see that I'm sending off the glaze himself and the plaster emerge from underneath, so it gives me an additional textural effect. And again, I can insist in some area to age it even more. And here we are, this is the final result. And now we're going to have a quick overview of our entire process. We start from a mixture of glaze, uh, sand, and latex paint to create our texture, which we stipple all over the surface. We let it dry and came back with our smooth absorbent plaster and skip travel all over. After that, we apply our three-layer stencil with a light brown color to transfer our image. Then we start to block in with our four basic color red green uh, yellow and blue and then we came back for the shadow and the highlight of those colors at this point the image was complete we let it dry sand it with 200 sandpaper and then apply our final glaze after five to ten minutes wait we wipe the glaze off and as it dry, we are sand again the surface to, um, to let the plaster texture emerge. This is one of many in our series of DVD. For more information, check Vigini Studio at viginistudio.com. Thank you for watching and good luck with your work.